Hey there, welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to make that happen too. That's why in today's tutorial, I want to show you how you can easily customize the icons inside your accordion block. So if you're ready to learn how to make this happen, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so here I have an accordion block and a 7.1 side, but keep in mind this customization is also going to be possible in 7.0. So the way that we're going to be achieving this today is by substituting the little arrow icons that we already have here in place. If you're working with the plus signs, don't worry, the code is going to apply for those ones too. So to be able to replace these icons, what we're going to be using today is a background image. I'm going to show you how you can substitute all of the icons for the same image and how you can do it per accordion item in case you want to use different icons for each one. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we need to set things up so that we can get started. So the first thing that we need to do here is look at the container that is currently holding this icon. So if we take a look here through the inspect element tool, we're going to see that here we landed on the actual arrow icon. So this icon is inside a container that's called arrow container. And then if we keep looking up, we can see here that this whole thing is inside another container called accordion icon container. Now, the reason why I'm looking through all of the different parts that are creating this little icon and not just starting with the icon itself right off the bat is because I want to make sure that I'm actually using the space that Squarespace already created for the original icon so that I can reuse that too and keep using the different settings that we have inside the accordion block so that we can move things to the left side, to the right side and change the size. So what we're going to have to do here is add a background image either to this container here or to this container here and then hide the actual arrow or plus sign that we have in the block. So if we take a closer look at the different options that we have, so this one or this one to be able to bring in the background image, you can see how this one here actually has the height and the width for the space that the arrow is occupying. So I think this is going to be the best way to go to be able to add the background image to this container. And so if this one stretches out or shrinks down, the new image is going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this class here to be able to use it as my selector inside of my custom CSS window. Now for this tutorial, Tutorial, I'm not really going to concern myself regarding which block I'm going to be targeting inside of the website. So I'm just going to be applying this customization across all accordion blocks that I have on the site. If you want to make your customization more specific, you can go ahead and include either the block ID, the data section ID, the page ID, or anything else that is going to help you narrow down where these changes should happen on your project. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to grab that class, like I said. And then basically the first thing that I'm going to do here is start adding the background image and then I'm going to hide the icon just because. So let's just go ahead and add in here a background image property. And I already have a couple of icons in here that I downloaded from Icon Finder. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the first one that I have here. Right now you can see that it's not really showing up on the screen. So if we take a look here, we just see the regular arrows that we had before. There's like not really a change happening there. And that is because the icon is very likely a little bit too big for the space. So we're not really seeing the whole thing. So let's go ahead and add a couple of properties to be able to resize and position that icon in the center of that little space. So I'm going to go ahead and use here background position set this to center and then I'm going to do background size and I'm going to set this to contain. And once I do that, you can see how now we can actually see the little bell icon showing up where the arrow is located. So the last thing that I'm going to add in here is a background repeat just to make sure that I'm not going to have extra icons in there. I only want one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in here. Background repeat. And I'm going to set this to no repeat because like I said, I don't want to create a pattern of icons. I just want to have one in there. Okay. And now for the final step, we're going to get rid of the arrow. So let's take a quick look inside our inspect element tool again to see how we're going to be pointing to it. So here I have my arrow element. You can see that it's a div with a class of arrow. And then this one is sitting inside a container that's called arrow container. And then this one is sitting inside the container that we were previously targeting. So one way that we can target this little arrow could be through the class of arrow that we have here. But the problem is that the class for the plus sign is different. So that means that we would need to add a little bit of extra code to make sure that either of the icons that you may be using is going to disappear from the accordion block. So I think I actually want to do this slightly differently. 
what I want to do here, considering that these ones are div elements in here and that there's nothing else inside this little container, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to target any divs that we have inside this pairing container. So the one that we have applied the background image to, the one that is holding the original icon. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as my selector. Like I said, I'm going to use that accordion icon container class once more. And then I'm just going to target any divs that we have in there so that only the background image shows up. And now to make this disappear, what I'm going to do is use here visibility hidden. So if we set that up in the code, you're going to see how now the arrow is completely gone. So let's go ahead and save this real quick and test things out with the plus sign to make sure that everything is working correctly in our code. So if I go here into the design tab and click here to select the plus icon, you can see how nothing else shows up on our accordion block. We only have the new custom icon. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, the reason why I was selecting this container in particular is because if I now change here the icon size, the background image is also going to adjust to that new size. And so you're going to be able to resize that little icon very easily. Now, another cool thing that you can do here is actually change the icon placement because again, the background image has been applied to the original like icon container. You can see that now if I select the right placement for the icon, the icon moves. So we have the background image inside that container. And so we can continue to use all of these settings inside the accordion block to be able to style the position and the size of our new custom icon. Now, the only thing to consider here is that the icon thickness is not really going to modify anything in our image because it's precisely that it's an actual image that we uploaded into that little block. So the icon thickness is an option that we're not going to be able to play around with anymore. But fortunately, the other two are still going to work for us. All right. So now that you know how we can replace the image for all of the accordion items that we have inside our block, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can make this happen for each individual accordion item. So I'm going to go ahead and head back into my custom CSS window over here. And then basically what we need to do in this situation is find a way to mark or identify or differentiate each of the different elements that we have in here so that we can style them separately. So if we take a quick look inside our inspect element tool once more, we can see that amongst all of the things that we have in here, we have a couple of LI elements. So just starting to look up from where I'm standing at the moment, you can see that here we have like a button element and here we have an H4 element and here we have an LI element. And so when I close this one, you're going to see that we have a couple of repeated elements in here. So each of these LI elements that we have here represent each of the different accordion items that we have inside our block. Now, the problem in this situation is that all of them are structured exactly in the same way and they're named exactly the same way. So to be able to differentiate them, what we can use in this situation is their position inside the HTML structure. And in order to do that in CSS, what we need to do is either first child, last child or nth child selectors. So what these selectors are going to do is just help us point to the thing that we have inside a group of similar items based on where they are located inside the code. So for example, if I want to target this first one that I have in here, what I need to do is just grab the class that is common across all of the different elements that I have in here and then attach the other selector to this. So in this situation, because I'm selecting the first one, what I could do is select here first child and then let's just do a quick style here so that you can see what's happening. So you can see that if I target the first child, only the first item that has that class is going to get selected inside my accordion. And then if I don't want to use first child, the other thing that I could do here is use nth child and just select the first one It's going to do the exact same thing. Now, if I want to select the last one, what I can do is either use here last child, let me remove that. And now the third one is going to be selected in there. Or if I want to point specifically to the third one, which in this case is the same last one, I can go ahead and use here nth child three. Now for the second one, we don't really have an option here. We need to use nth child two to be able to point to it, but you can see how we have a little bit of flexibility here in terms of how we can select things with these more advanced selectors. 
Now, what we're going to do is use this sort of targeting method with our previous selector so that we can add a different background image for each of the icons that we have in here. So starting with the first one, I'm going to go ahead and use here first child just because. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and include the previous selector that we already know that is targeting the background image or that container to be able to add the background image. So I'm going to go ahead back here and grab this accordion icon container class. And then what I'm doing now is I'm targeting the accordion icon container container inside that first accordion item. And now that I have that in place, all I need to do here is just set a new background image. So let's just go ahead and set this to one of the other icons that I have in here. Let's set this camera here. And now you can see how even though the other ones still have that bell icon, the first one now has a camera icon. So then it's just a matter of repeating the same process and then targeting each of the other items that we have in here. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this code, target the second one. So now we need to use nth child, child two. And now instead of using the camera icon, what I'm going to do is use this little clip that we have in here. And so now I have a bell, a clip, and a little camera. Now to make things a little bit cleaner in the code, what I'm going to do is duplicate this code once more. And then I'm going to target the third item that we have in here. And the original image that we have up here, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and use it down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the original background image from all the icons because I'm already targeting them separately. So I don't really need to have this general background image applied anywhere. And you can see how as easily as that. now we have a different custom icon for each of the different accordion items inside your block. Alrighty, and there you have it. That's how you can change the original icons inside the accordion block for custom ones in your client site. I really hope that you found today's tutorial helpful. If you did, go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have any suggestions for future content, go ahead and leave it down below and I will see you next time.